to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A blessed evening, a blessed day to uh, all of you, dear friends, fellow worshipers, and those who are joining us through this live streaming. Again, I would like to focus on the first reading, which is hardly taken into consideration in our uh, reflections in our homilies. Anyway, the gospel is always uh, read on Sundays and uh, basis of our reflection homilies. So today we, we start reading some portion of this book of Leviticus, one of the, uh, the books of the Old Testament. And uh, as someone said, it is per perhaps the most boring book in the whole of the Bible because most of, uh, of it seems not relevant to our life as a church and, and our life of worship today. I do not know if you remember anything what we have read today because it is about days, festivals, ritual, etc. Perhaps that is the reason why we do not frequently hear readings taken from this book. Now, as I've said, and uh, pointed out by uh, the experts of the Bible that the book of Leviticus was a kind of a, a synthesis of cultural practices during that time, secular traditions, and religious rituals. And it evolved gradually so that uh, the Mosaic religion could move with the changing times now. So we see that it would develop these traditions, these rituals in the history of the people of God. The reading today details the different religious festivals, celebrations of the people of God. And some of them, the main celebrations are uh, the Pascha or the Passover, the Pentecost, the uh, Feast of Harvest, the, the Feast Festival of Atonement, the Feast of Tabernacles. That is, those are the annual celebrations. And there are the weekly, of course, the weekly would be the Sabbath. And the daily would be the morning offering, sacrifice, and the evening sacrifice. So, aside from indicating the date of their celebrations, there is a mandate to hold sacred gathering, convocation of the people of God, and the offering of the corresponding sacrifice required for such festival, for example. And another element is the injunction to abstain from work. I think it is a logical uh, requirement because how can you celebrate if there is work? No? So all those things. So convocation, offering, and then the uh, abstention from work. So these religious festivals have their roots in the experience of that loving and saving encounter with God of the people. So yung ugat ng lahat ng mga ito ay yung karanasan ng pagliligtas ng Diyos at pagkalinga ng Diyos sa nakaraan. So the celebrations of these, whether it is annual or uh, seasonal, 
are geared towards re-evoking that original event through which the help with the help of the ritual celebrations and through these rituals the community that gathers become participant of that re-encounter that experience of the saving action of God manifested again through the celebration of my God through the gathering through the ritual celebration God allows people to experience that original experience of his salvation in the past For example, the uh, Passover, the Pascha, which is the annual celebration of the uh, liberation of the people of God from slavery in Egypt, what we call the Exodus. It is through their ritual celebration of that people throughout all generations to experience and through these celebrations they can experience the great event of the Exodus. So to, through this convocation, this celebration, this ritual celebration, the people are given the opportunity to come in contact once again with that saving action of God. Or to put it in another way, through the ritual celebration, through this convocation, the participants are made present to that event of Exodus, for example. We see here an important pattern and dynamics of how God continues to encounter and engage with His people through this communal gathering and ritual celebration, commemorating the original event that happened in the history, the in, in the intervention of God in their history. I do not know if you have noticed that it is the same pattern, it is the same dynamics that we have inherited in our own celebrations, Christian celebration. Our celebrations are rooted in the action of Christ with His dying and rising. The apex of this saving action of Christ and he are now commemorated in a ritual form because he himself, Jesus himself said, do this in memory of me. With the help now of the ritual action and symbols, signs and symbols like the bread and wine being offered as now the body and blood of Christ. Those who participate in this ritual celebration come in contact with the work of redemption of Christ. So we see here that the liturgy celebration, Christian celebration, is not like magic. Yung magic magikin mo lang sang Dios na. It is rooted in the very action of Christ. And it is in coming, in participating in this action of Christ through this ritual that we come also in contact with the same offer of salvation that Jesus accomplished in the past is made present here. You must have realized that the key word here is participation, to take part. 
Participation means our presence and that is coupled with our faith in this, in this action. So we realize therefore that the Mass, for example, rooted in the action of Christ of giving Himself in the Last Supper is an opportunity for each one who participate to come and also experience that salvation, that original act of Jesus' action of saving us. A beautiful way, shall I say, that God that has designed in order that anyone throughout all these generations will have the opportunity to participate in the saving action of Christ. So, the, at the center of this is our participation. Why participation? Because it is our way of opening ourselves to God, to Christ. That when I participate, come to church, participate in praying, in singing, in responding, and putting my mind, my heart into the celebration is our way of saying yes to Christ, to His invitation. God cannot force us to be saved if we do not want to be saved. And our way of saying yes is precisely in participating with openness, with faith, what we do, what we celebrate. The marvelous work of God's salvation. Secondly, I think so, number one is uh, the lesson of the importance of participation. I know that during this pandemic, we are limited to virtual participation, especially those following us through this live streaming. I know that this is not the fullest expression of participation that we need now. But I think the, uh, at the core of this, of course, is our desire to participate, our desire to be part of this work of salvation of Christ, but impeded by our situation, well, God knows and reads our hearts. So that is the, uh, the consolation that we have that even though we do not have the fullest expression of participation, God reads and knows our hearts, our desire, our, uh, our longing to participate. Because the, of course, why do we say that the greatest and the fullest expression of our participation is our physical here now in the celebration of the community because it is rooted also in the, in the injunction of of God in the Bible, a sacred convocation, you should call, he would say, the gathering of the people of God. And, of course, it is only through our physical participation that we participate in the greatest form of participation, and that is the Holy Communion. You cannot have, we, well, we have our spiritual communion, no? but the greatest expression of our participation is our communion with Christ, sacramental communion. The second point is also the, the kind of, uh, the importance of taking into consideration or the importance of our ritual participation. Sometimes uh, we are lazy to participate even to sing or to respond, Amen, or and also with you. 
lazy to re- listen to the word. No? And this is part of the ritual celebration. No? So, for us priests and ministers, for example, our care for the celebration, the proclamation, for example, the care for the things that we use to express that mystery, it is also very important. No? So, dear friends, the Lord comes to us in a ritual form of eating and drinking the bread and wine, which we call the Eucharist, the bread, the body and blood of Christ. They are part of us of our ritual, yet they enable us to come in contact with that original act of and gift of Christ, salvation for us. May we come to appreciate our celebrations because these are not lesser than the original event. Sometimes we have the, oh, ang swerte naman ng mga apostoles doon sa huling hapunan kasi nandun sila nung ibigay ni Jesus. Don't think that what we celebrate is lesser than the Last Supper. It is, it has the same effect, the same gift, and that is Jesus Himself. May our love, our participation in this, in the act of salvation of Christ, continue